So we're going to go ahead and jump into the next segment of this and with this one we actually are going to be using our very small um, triple zero and with this we're just going to be using pure straight Sahara yellow um, and this is a little bit more intense and so we do need to thin it down a little bit more um, just because we don't we don't want it to cover very opaquely we want it to be kind of kind of fine uh, at least upon these first few uh, these first few coats so make sure that you're drawing very fine lines that's too thin. Always adjusting. Always testing. Always adjusting. Still too thin. I'm just turning it upside down because it's going to be easier to pull. If you notice, I'm kind of going to create like this X-ish pattern. Um, It's difficult with a smaller brush because you really have to load it up. It's loading the body is quite a different um, a task compared to um, a lot of other a lot of other larger bodied brushes. Now they still have their utility and their you just have to learn how to control them a little bit differently. Again, that's why it's a good idea to have a secondary brush on hand. This is what I do uh, recommend something like two brush blending is because it, it just gives you that extra element of control. And as you can see, it's really starting to blend into what we already have existing. I am going for like an extreme, extreme wear. Okay, so that that's happy. I mean, the other thing that you can tell is that it, it is blended into the surrounding area. And so I'm very, very pleased with how that looks. Now, the next spot that we're gonna go and start to work on is up here. And this is, again, a bit of a different game. We may need to thicken the paint up. Um, and it's tricky because we need to be fine, but also very opaque. And we can partially do this like with stippling. Stippling is great because it'll drop some paint on because we're splaying the brushes. Um, and then you can drag and draw that paint around where you might want it to go. just kind of like that. Now, the only other area that we really have to attack is going to be down here. And just lots of like little stippling and, and kind of add a little bit of a dispersed pattern. 
just make sure that we're covering a good bit of it. So yeah, and that is all for this section. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and you know continue to work on him, and we'll be back here in just a moment. I went ahead and took it off camera and got the majority of the rest of the uh, the leather wearing and distressing completed, and this is with the uh, Iroko, Iroko um, color, and we have it here on the palette. So yeah, we went ahead and left one section right here, and then of course this whole arm one more time. Um, but as you can see, the general result is really, really nice, and we're going to be getting it to that final finish. So we're still using our Broken Toad triple uh, zero here, and what we want to do is we want to kind of thin this down to about a... Uh, uh, medium to heavy layer consistency as you can see right here I um, just just want to make sure that it's uh, it's somewhat heavy that it has a little bit of weight on the brush and um, then what we're gonna do is we are going to start to uh, just make very small very thin lines at the bottom here uh, and just you know continuing this pattern so we're building uh, you know pattern upon pattern upon pattern and it, it gives us this really nice worn uh, type of look uh, and then we're going to be doing a few extra things here to the big cracks. There's a little crack right here as well. We're just kind of outlining it. And We may even start to get in some small lines up here as well, just kind of continue the pattern. But uh, in general, you know, you can kind of see uh, over here, it's these small lines are the majority of what we're going to need. We can add in uh, even more information if we really care to. I like to flip the figure over to do this just because it lets me pull a little bit more easily. And we can kind of get in some small squigglies. You guys can see too, I, I tend to reload the brush quite a lot more because uh, like we were discussing uh, earlier, the the brush just doesn't hold quite as much. And so coming back now here, we're going to address these cracks. Now if you look at any of the reference images that we use, you can notice that the the cracks tend to have a lot of like fuzziness and a lot of texture around them and so we're going to kind of do a little bit of stippling around the crack just to create that and then we are going to create a long line continuing away from this and we want it to be irregular and it can kind of go quite a ways and we can create some stippling even around them and uh, you know just just be sure to orient it whatever to whatever's going to be the most comfortable because this is a, a very it's, it's a little bit tricky to get the angle of especially with a little bit of a larger miniature like this we just want to make sure that our our brush stroke is being consistent when we are pulling these lines just like that you know just a little bit more in here that we need to get but as you can see it matches up with the rest of it and uh, I really love the look of this It has just so much texture uh, in general so we're gonna go ahead and move up here I'm just kind of doing the same thing trying to find like anywhere where it's really creasing will probably have some kind of dramatic cracking and so we can create some kind of small stippling effect, um, just being very, very slow and careful with it. If it accumulates too fast, just lift it up just a little bit. Same thing up here, just more stippling. And then we come to probably the funnest part, in my opinion, which are these cuffs. Because we can be really, we can create a lot of 
really fantastic interest here in a relatively short amount of time. Just continuing to pull these very small straight lines. You'd be amazed by the the wonders that can be accomplished just by uh, repeating small patterns over and over and over again. It's I think we were talking about this before with uh, fractals, where you know fractals are incredibly beautiful, but it's just one very simple pattern repeated over and over again. So never underestimate yourself, and never underestimate the power of. Uh, small repeated patterns because they're really what leads to something like this. So um, that's really it for this initial uh, leather segment. We're going to be doing uh, a few additional parts. You know, I'm going to cover um, at least one more of the one more of the belts. Um, a lot of the other stuff I, I may be doing in a stream, uh, but the, the focus this month is on leather. Um, so I'll probably paint his hat in one of the belts, and uh, I would really really like to paint some wood texture for you. Uh, we're definitely gonna do some wood texture as well as the sword because the sword is just too cool not to paint and record. So, hey there guys and thank you so much for watching this initial part of this month on texture and uh, you know, it's really, really fun. I really love this stuff and I've really been wanting to dive into it and you've really been wanting me to dive into it for the, the past few months. So I'm really happy that I can finally do that. So keep an eye out in the coming weeks and we are gonna be covering, you know, uh, different varieties of leather uh, and we are also gonna be covering how to paint wood and that really nice sword which has some crazy teeth and metal and all kinds of fantastic stuff. So, so we will see you for the next week's video. Bye.